chests listening, bodies heaving, thrusting, flexing, striations as they gallivant and flaunt in front of their adoring public. No, this week we're not talking about wrestling. We're talking about Magic Mike XXL, a movie featuring sort of a wrestler named Kevin Nash. This is another edition of Squared Circle Cinema. I'm Ryan the Muffler Bruckner alongside Mike Big Tobacco Ryan. Jeez, thanks for having me, Ryan. It's great to be here. Well, that was uh, whew, that was something. I'm glad I brought you back. Just, just get a little hotter in here. It's a little hotter. You're glistening. I know. You got pomade in your hair today. I do. My hair's pretty long and unruly these days. And if I don't, you, you don't even want to see my hair without pomade. Nice. You don't want to see it. Sounds like a satisfying thing to do. You get to pop open the jar. Yeah. You feel like George Clooney. Yeah. In Oh Brother, Where Art Thou? Yeah, except I'm not a dapper dam. I'm not a dapper dam. You use a fork? I've never used pomade. No, you I've never just, had the length of hair that would. You just put it in your hands. It. Oh. And you run it through there and then you use a comb. All right. Well, uh, we watched Magic Mike XXL. But enough about pomade. Or Squared Circle Cinema because Kevin Nash is in it. He's in it. He's in it. Yes. <laughs> so I guess it, it fits the format. Definitely the quietest, smallest role. Yeah. Probably didn't have to prep all that much. Easy payday for Kevin Nash. Way to go, pal. Nice. Yeah, I got I got a lot to say about this movie. All right, well, we're on Kevin Nash. This is a wrestling podcast. Kevin Nash was a wrestler. He was Diesel, right? Do you ever stop being a wrestler? Hmm, it's like a Marine. I yeah. guess not. Um, his hair, man. Was it the same in the first one? I remember just being long Kevin Nash kind of typical perm. His hair looked to. weird. It well, was he, incredible. I think he had a weave. Because yes, he usually they has, did that intentional. I don't, did it look like that? He usually has short one? hair. Man, I mean, it we was saw incredible. him at WrestleMania. It was hilarious. Ago. Yeah, no, I, I think they gave him like a Canadian, like like a mullet, yeah. rest, like a Canadian wrestler yeah. circa the 80s or someone from the Minnesota State High School all hair team. It's freaking hilarious. Did you look this and up? He owned it. On IMDb at all? No, I did not. It has a 5.7. That IMDb. is, and that really pisses that me off. That is a shame. And I'm gonna cut a promo nice. on these fat, I out know. of shape. Well, you should. IMD review riding rednecks out B. there. IMDb. Go. In a world where inclusivity is the defining issue of our time, you got the transgender issue. Yeah. You've got the the gender pay gap issue. Yep. We're, as a society, we're being more inclusive than ever. Glass ceilings are just waiting being to be shattered. Shattered, and Dolph Ziggler's there. That lady is shattering. saying it. And um, how dare they besmirch a movie that celebrates women like Magic Mike XXL Absolutely. does. This movie celebrates women. It celebrates men. It celebrates friendship and decency. It celebrates fun. Yeah. And And happiness. It has one of the best scenes. It encapsulates joy of the decade. Okay. There's a scene in it that I I think is a scene of the decade contender. Can I guess what it is? And we can go back to it in a linear fashion. If it isn't, it's the the concession stand, stand scene. Right? Convenience store. Oh, okay, sorry, the convenience store at the gas yes. station. Yes. The scene at the gas station. Yes. It was incredible. That was the most charming, funny, just well uh, put together. God, I, I like that is one of the greatest scenes of all time. I was smiling from ear to ear. I was like, this is freaking hilarious. And this girl who's never smiled in her life. She's just chuckled. Looking, she yeah. was she She's loved like, oh, it. Oh, this guy's She's a real like, oh, that made my a great day. guy. Thank you. Thank you for dancing. My job sucks, but at least I saw your who, ad. Who couldn't like this movie? So the first uh, negative review that's on <laughs> IMDb I thought was really funny. Uh, it's basically a woman being pissed off that this movie wasn't racy enough. 
Let me, let me just read a few snippets. Wasn't racy enough? Yeah. Pull. Oh, Strange it is to pay seven to ten dollars to see a movie about male strippers, and none of them even remove their t-shirts until the so-called grand finale at the end. Then is when our boys actually strip town to speedos and jock straps. Wow. Channing Tatum, the main star, was all over the media months before the premiere, assuring one and all that the sequel to the highly successful original Magic Mike definitely <laughs> deserves a hard X rating, since it'll show off a lot more of the guys than previously seen. Wow. This is just a pissed off woman. I'm wanted, okay with that. She wanted to see Channing Tatum's I know. dick. I'm okay with that, though. I could <laughs> see it from her perspective. Yeah. She just wanted to see, you know. Yeah, that's like a guy saying, like, there weren't enough explosions Exa in the exactly. Stallone movie. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Or, I mean, you know, I would just thumb through Blockbuster, like the horror movie section. Oh, uh, this potentially will have tits in it. I'm going to get it. You know, this will definitely have tits in it. Look at the back box here. Yeah. Dude. I'm going to be seeing some titties tonight. And you're denied that? <laughs> it was kind of marketed as you know a, pr a much racier film, yeah. I think. And but she just I, wanted to see some dudes getting down. I and they do it at the end, though. I mean, yeah, they get the down. end is I incredible. Mean, yeah, the end the is... The mirror... They, they're getting down. Like how, I mean, you got even if you wanted that kind of movie, right? You, there's a huge payoff. They do some crazy dance moves. It's yeah. acrobatic. And they're fully naked. They all get fully... Well, they got they, the little... They have their jock straps. Right, but that's... But, come I mean, on. yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean, and I think it's just racy enough, you know, it, Perfect. if it was like dicks flying everywhere, it would, it would, it would be uncomfortable, make me and you not really want to watch it. But like how, man, the nine inch nails closer, oh, the true yeah. blood guy, did. dude, he's, holy shit. He's so great. He I might be my favorite actor of all time. I feel like, like, I wish I could be him. Did you like, see the Pee Wee movie? Yeah. Oh. That guy, great just, bromance. I mean, that guy is married to Sofia Vergara. He's got the and like a, just like a great looking guy. He's a hell of an actor too. Yeah, and he'll make fun of himself. I bet he's a nice dude to be around. Yeah. What I like about this movie is it's so happy, positive, and fun. The first movie was a bummer. So the first movie is like cheap ecstasy with a horrible come down. This is like pure MDMA. And you ride the yep. good feeling throughout. Yeah. Then there, there's, it was a nice there's journey. There's and now I haven't seen the first one in a movies. long time. But I remember it being more racy. And it's darker. This poor woman probably. It's bleaker. More of. Sadder. Right. Whereas this is, this is fun. laugh out loud moment. Yeah. This is them on their last ride. It's, like, it's a road trip. Yeah. All right. These are a bunch of dudes haven't seen each other in a while. They're going to make yeah. the best of it. They're going to live in the present. And there's... No antagonism at all. There's no bad guy in this movie at all. Oh yeah, that's what that's another thing There's I love about it. There's <laughs> nothing that could make you feel scared, upset, sad, yeah, at all in the movie. This movie is a celebration of women and men that want to make them feel special, right. basically. There's seriously no antagonism in this movie. They didn't even yeah. have to try to convince Magic Mike to tag along. He was just yeah. like, yeah. yeah, I thought about it. Like, it didn't even take any did, convincing. They didn't even ask him. Well, he, about he like, was working in his shop. Well, let's, let's get right, into we're it. Getting let's ahead get into it. Um, so the movie opens. I know everyone wants to hear us describe Magic Mike XXL scene by scene. So let's get it started. I mean, there's not much of a plot. I think we could run through this pretty easy. I jumped ahead pretty quick. Um, so we last left Mike. We, he was starting his furniture business. We pick up with him. In the middle of it, you know, he's doing his orders. He's doing good, yeah. but he's kind of struggling. He's on the brink. He, he needs he some more clients. He can't pay his employee health insurance. But he's close. He has a plan, yeah. right? He's trying to get there. He's just not there yet. And, and you the know guy, he's a great the, boss. The guy's like, okay, cool. He understands. You, you know, I know that you're still working hard. And then it's, you know what, man? It sucks. And I, I came up with this date earlier. I thought we'd hit it. All right, but yeah. we haven't yet. But I think yeah. we will. But look, go home to your family tonight. All right, I'm sorry. I'm sorry I yeah. just threw down that news on you. What a great guy. Yeah. And so uh, he gets... Uh, they should have a spinoff on that character. He gets... His buddy. Oh, yeah. Worker. He should start stripping, too. I thought he was. Like, I thought maybe he was one of the guys in the first one. No. That would have been a good callback for this movie. Well, after all that happens, he gets a call from 
Kevin Nash. I made a point to highlight every time Kevin Nash does something in the movie so we could talk about it. All right. So the phone call and then he actually has a bigger part in this movie than I think the first one. Yeah. Yeah. So he he brings Mike back into the fold. He's like, Dallas no, is, something happened with Dallas. Dallas is gone, man. Yeah. Dallas. Is gone. Dallas gotta, is gone. Gotta come out here. We're, we're, we're coming to so, Tampa Bay. Yeah. No. He, Where are they? Tampa? Florida. Yeah, they're in Tampa. And so he uh, he thinks that something horrible happened. He goes. He thinks he's going to awake. He shows up. He shows up massive, dressed as if he were going to a massive wake. pool party. He gets thrown in the pool. Craziest pool party with the most beautiful people on the planet. Yeah, these right guys, here at this hotel. These guys are like, we had to find a way to get you to come here. We, yeah. My cell phone was in my pocket. What you? Something happens to a cell phone later on. We'll get to that. Yeah. I like the girl in the motorcycle helmet that's just ramming just him. Fucked up on whatever pills. Yeah, probably coked out of her mind, just slamming on windows and like flicking, flipping people off. Like, yeah. fuck you, dude. Yeah. Yeah, so like they're all sitting around catching up. He probably up. fucked everybody there. Kevin Nash is rolling a joint. Yeah, I, he doesn't do mollies, but he'll roll a joint. I feel like he was uh he was the one there. He's like the old timer in wrestling. Yeah. He's there to tell them what it was like stripping for women in the 80s. Right. And, 90s. and they didn't really give him that opportunity. I think that would yeah. be a nice moment cuz he's just a surveyor. Yeah. Right? While all the action goes down, he'll speak when spoken to. Yeah. Right. But he has a very powerful message message when he gets to uh, Andy McDowell's house, which we'll get to. Yeah. And he has a very nice heart to heart at the very end before their last performance. Yeah. He together. has some great. There's some great moments. Moments. Here. Yeah. So they're going to go to the, the big convention. It's going to be their last ride in Myrtle Beach. Myrtle Beach. They're telling him that that he should go, but he's kind of got to think about it. And so uh, one last show to go down in a blaze of glory. Because what happened in the first one? Why? How the guy got fired? Dallas fired them all, or something like no, that. They, like, I don't want to okay. go out like that. I want to go go out on my terms. He, so it didn't happen in the last movie. It just happened between movies. Like Dallas kind of he ditched them. Okay. Um, but it was basically Matthew McConaughey won the Oscar for uh, Dallas Buyers Club. Uh, okay. And your quote goes way up after an Oscar win. Right. So, so they f- couldn't afford him. They just basically wrote him out of the story. Fine with me. Didn't they, need him. They didn't. Yeah, they didn't need him. He wasn't one of the buds. He was the boss. So yeah. Um, and they replaced him with the iconic Mexican comedian. Well, he Fluffy. was he was in the first one. Oh really? Yeah. But he was gonna be their 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 their, their MC, right? That was the initial plan. Yeah, but I think uh, Gabriel Iglesias in the first one, he's like the strip club DJ. Oh, guy. Right. Um. So they hit the road in his decked out Roach Coach. Yeah, it's a Froyo truck. But yeah. before that, like he's not gonna go with them. He goes back to his shop and stuff. He's working and he puts on some like hip hop tunes and then he just can't stop thrusting his pelvis. Right. And he's again, like this something's is no come over me. This is no there's no the moment need to dance. where he's like, Come on, man, you guys you gotta come with. We're a band of brothers here. They they, they didn't really have they, that. There was no one was really trying to convince I mean, he's him. He's got his business. And but, he's just like, I'm going. But he was just he was there with those guys. Then and that was his, his shop. song from the first movie that came on his iPod while he was welding. I want yeah. you to describe this scene. Actually, he's like sanding Do it slowly. stuff. And slower. Do it, Ryan. Slower. That song comes on and he's like thrusting on tables. Go. And then he go go go. go 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 sliding around on stools go, and stuff. Go. go. And just all that go, rusting go, and magic. Go. He's like, I got to join these guys. Crazy so, dance number, man. He shows this up motherfucker like, can move. right before we're, they leave. Like, what are the odds? He didn't call them to tell them or anything. He's just like, I'm going to show up and go. Yeah. And they're like, oh, you're here. You're coming. We told them what time they were going to leave. Yeah, they did. Yeah, I don't know. I would assume. Well, okay. It was just but serendipity, man. I'd, I'd love to be able to do that for people to not expect me and then to show up and to everybody be... Be yeah. happy that it was great. There. Well, not everyone was happy. All right. And I didn't remember this character, of course, from the first one. And I'm going to stop saying that I don't remember the first one because this isn't about the first one. This is about the second one. Magic Mike XXL. The Ken doll guy, right? Um, he kind of was, I don't know, a little a less little about inviting. Something. There was something on his mind. They thought, okay, work. they're going to set up a bad guy here. They had to work through some shit. They just had to work through some shit. And they did the next day over a couple, a couple brews and they were cool again. And then yeah. they became the tightest of the group, I think. 
Yeah. I think they had the biggest, best friendship. There's nothing I like more than watching people be friends. No. <laughs> nothing. There was no source of antagonism <laughs> in this movie yeah. at all. Oh, Everyone's just having a really great time. Yeah. This, this movie could change the world, I think. I think if everybody watched this. I, if, if we were in a world where this would be nominated for Best Picture, and I mean this sincerely, this yeah. would be a better place. The world would be a better place. No. Yeah. I, I if this wasn't this, this kind of genre wasn't so frowned upon. You know, I, I usually kind of make a, a best of list every year of movies I watch, and I watch this late. Right, it totally would have made my top ten. Absolutely, totally would have made it. It makes you feel good. Yeah, and so they they ride around in the car, and uh, Big Dick is like, "Hey, Mike, you got to be present with us. We're we're here on our last ride. You can't be on your phone." Right. Oh throws, my God. Throws his phone out the window, and then Mike gets all pissed off. And he, th- he thinks he threw Big Dick's phone out the window, but it was actually Tarzan, was Kevin Nash. Kevin Nash. Oh. I only had seven like, minutes. I only had a few minutes on it. So Dude, I, I would have been fucking livid. Can you imagine? There's no way that that Roach coach would have continued. I would have, like, stopped the fucking car right now. I'm you know? going home. And it's like, you got to live in the present, man. You just got to yeah. live in the present. It's like, well, I'm presently, I'm doing business here. All right? Look, I'm here. I came with you guys. And he fucking tosses it phone out the window but Holy he had a good shit. point he did this is the last time they're gonna be able to do this together oh, but it felt like he was just about they're to put the phone away on it's just he shouldn't dude, be but the on phone is all. devastating dude you got all your numbers all your contacts on there it's all in the cloud i hope he set that up that it's or has some sort can, of external hardware at this point in time you can't not set that up unless you still have like an iphone no, dude. I only trust the SIM card. It's all only out there. Only trust. All out there. All out there, man. Yeah. And so Big Dick's like, we're going to go deep down the rabbit hole together. See, that's the first thing I thought when they throw him in the pool at the, in the opening scene. Oh, his uh, phone. That's the thir- first thing I thought of. Like, oh, man, his phone's probably in his pants. Do you remember when I, we went, went to Vegas and I got yep. in the hot tub with my phone? Yep. And what did you do? I st- Dude. Bought a new one immediately. 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 Yes. Like, hey, this will be the next thing we do. You know? How could... Like, I, uh, I still have nightmares about that. Oh. Occasionally, I think... Like, I have dreams of myself going in water with my really? clothes. And then thinking, like, there's my phone in my pocket yeah. and pulling it out. And I'm like, is it okay? I, I have another friend okay. that, that did that. Jumped in the pool. And the look on his face was like he just dropped, jumped into molten lava. It's like... <gasps> And then he yeah. brought his phone out of his pocket. We're like, no, put some, <laughs> put some rice on it or something, man. Yeah. All I've never done that. Should be waterproof. God damn it. They're getting there. I think. God damn it. So they end up going to a drag club. Yep. Um, so that they have a $400 prize for the best amateur queen. And they all strut their stuff. Kevin Nash applies some. Some lipstick, some pretend lipstick. Yeah, I like this. This was fun. He was a yeah. good drag queen. Yeah. I mean, you know, he had the mannerisms down pretty good. That was a funny scene. Fluffy ends up <laughs> winning. Yeah, that was pretty good. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's Puffy. Fluffy. Oh. And so they they go to the beach. What was what was he dressed as? Like a, a Mexican grandmother doing the cha-cha? He, didn't he the have like a fruit head the, or the fruit something? fruit head thing. Yeah. That was great. That was he had heels, high heels perfect. on. And he looked exactly like those women looked. Yeah. It was perfect. A Chiquita banana woman. Um, so they're all sitting around the fire, and then Big Dick says he invented condoms and mints in the same package. But then one of the condom drag mints. Came- condom mints. Yeah, condom mints. It's right here. Google it. Yeah. It's already online, uh, you idiot. Bitch, this already exists. Come on. After, like, he spilled his heart out. Of, you know, like, he was wearing his heart on his sleeve. He was, like, hesitant to even mention this. Like, don't steal my idea, please. This is really big. And then this bitch that he'd never met before. Uh, actually. Well, I That's mean, devastating. If it was that important to him, he would have looked into that all. Yeah, you're right. And you know what? I think... If you knew that this asshole was talking about some product that you knew existed, I probably would have looked it up. Looked it up. It's too. like, man, like to be these guys, they're always thinking about their condom and condoms and mints. Yep, anything could happen. The life you got They always have to carry them. 
I've never really had yeah. that experience where yeah. I had to consolidate those two things. Man, if only there was a way. Yeah. I'm bringing these everywhere I go so much. So wait a minute. Is it a condom? <laughs> I need to combine them. Is it a condom that tastes like mint? No, it's like they're both together. In like I thought it was for bag. her pleasure, for oil, oral, because women no, do not like, it's like to, you know, it's like you always with need, a condom. You always need both when you're going out. Okay, so it's in the plan. same package. Yeah. But then once you open it, though, the condoms are going to dry out. So you got to like mince, condoms boom, in, it's a one-two punch. And then there's some mints next to it in a, in a separate package. You got to have, you always thought I got to have it's a pocket a full of condoms. Convoluted idea. I love it. Um, And then uh, the the one, I forget his name, the guy, the guy that sings Heaven later the guy that's mad at mike um yeah What's the name? well the i don't know ken the, i no i yeah. called him ken because he was like a ken doll no he's ken he is ken perfect yeah, his name's ken that's how we'll remember that because i was going to suggest we call him ken yeah um he's like like he's talking about his ex-wife and he's like like oprah says when someone shows you themselves believe it yeah and this is also like the moment we find out. So he's a struggling actor, yeah, doing YouTube gigs now, which you obviously can't relate to, because apparently you're getting work left and right. You're oh, yeah. in a commercial now, Izzy. I need an agent. Jesus Christ. I need an agent. You know, Tyler thinks you look like the Property Brothers. So off base. Really? Yeah. Can you believe wow. that? <laughs> I kind of like that. Is that why you sent me that gif? I them? do not see the resemblance at all. Is that why you at sent me that gif all. of the Property at Brothers? No, that's because I just got my gif library. So why and that was you... the first thing that came up. That was trending. It was hot. <laughs> the, the Property <laughs> Brothers was hot? Yeah. Oh. I'm kidding. You kind of look like them. What are the odds? If you smashed both of their faces together. I'm kidding. Well, um... I just want everybody to know that Ryan... Look at me. Oh, God. Blue eyes. Ryan is an incredibly handsome man. All right? You don't look like yeah. the Property Brothers, all right? Who says they're not handsome? What an insult to oh, the Property Brothers. They're gorgeous. I don't know which one's better looking. So Tom these, or Tim. They all have um, some good talks. Anyway, I'm, Mike, proud, of, I'm uh, proud of you, Mike buddy. is pissing, and some yeah. girl like takes pictures of him. And uh, he he's a photographer. She doesn't have sex with her. Yes, that's right. And so she wanted to go like to the island. To an island. And he's like, no, you can't. Turns her down. Like, was he too afraid to fall in love? It's because so soon he's after just, his know, heart was so yeah, recently broken. Yeah, his heart was just broken. Which we get to later. And his dick just got punched by maybe by Ken too. That's true. Maybe she just wasn't his type. Yeah, you know, maybe. he probably just got too drunk. And couldn't get an erection though. Yeah, but the other guys, they got it on. Except no, big for Mike big didn't. big dick. Big dick, Mike. Because Wait, big he, dick Ricky. Because he has a big dick. Right, it's too big. Too big. And too so he big. hasn't had actual intercourse it's in a long cross time. To bear. Because they see his dick and they're like, uh, how about a blowjob? Right. Instead, and he's they're like, you know, you're like Cinderella. They're you just cursed. gotta find the the glass slipper. You got to find a big ass pussy. I for said that a dick, and I was thinking instantly, "Oh yeah, <laughs> this is yeah. gonna pay off later." Did yeah. I expect it to be Andy McDowell? Absolutely not. Yeah. Was I surprised pleasantly? Absolutely. She yes. always struck me as someone with a huge pussy <laughs> <laughs> that has hair just like well hair. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Multiplicity hairy, and very Groundhog hairy, day. like the hair on her head. Absolutely. Same length. <laughs> <laughs> same length and everything. <laughs> And so uh, they're all bang. driving, and they decide bangs. they said decide to take Herm Molly. Bangs. Tarzan, of course, Her, is like no brother. Her pussy looks like Kevin Nash's hair in this movie. <laughs> yeah, that's that's probably right. All right, shut up, dude. You're gross. Um, and so they once the Molly kicks in, they start analyzing their past routines. Love and, the scene. And, uh, yeah, I love it. A lot of the top dr times, drug scenes are a little too over the top, and it kind of takes me out of the movie. This a little scene bit. reminds this me of you. Perfect. This scene reminds me of you. Okay. Because overexcited. Uh, no, because Mike was trying to give constructive feedback to Big Dick, and he wouldn't and listen. He was getting 
offensive. He yeah. was like, fuck you. I like my fireman gimmick, even though I'm afraid of fireman but, but fire. But you listen to that Kiss song? Like, yeah, kill it. Yeah, yeah, great song. No, Do but like, like outside yeah. of Do work. you like this song? Huh? Yeah, no. I crush it. Fuck you. I'm not changing. But then it kicks in. Yeah, it kicks then in. They get... He's like, okay, well, wait. What if it's an actual wedding, right? Yeah. Okay, he's like, I'm a groom. He's all excited yeah. about this. Like, yeah. we got to fucking throw all our old gear out the window. The new adventures, man. That's what this is. This is an adventure. Yeah. It's I think, out of their fucking mind. Yeah, I think you start need to start taking some ecstasy to do some oh, self-love. Yeah, maybe. I think I'm due. Mushrooms as well would give me that euphoria. Um, <laughs> and so uh, this leads to the best scene ever. Absolutely. They're Take talk- it away. They're talking about... Take it away. They're talking about Big Dick's new routine, and they're, he's just trying to figure out what he loves about being a male entertainer. And he says... I'm not a fucking fireman. But then this I'm is I'm a fucking male entertainer. Yes. And this is moments after when he's in still sober. He's like yeah. he says there's no fucking universe in which I'm not doing that fireman routine. Yeah. You know? And I think they cut on that. And now, man, full yeah. circle. And so his done a lot of living in the last 5 minutes. Is to go make this like sad frumpy girl at the convenience store smile. So he walks in and immediately his favorite song play he was just saying that the backstreet boys are the only legit legitimate right uh boy band great hilarious and lines they're having a fight yeah. about you know the best NSYNC boy band NSYNC. from florida yeah and so he goes in there and that's the that song comes on my song plays what's the name of that song I think it's tell me why I want it that way. Oh yeah. Tell way. me why you ain't nothing. And he just feels it instantly. Yeah. He's like, all right, this is destiny that yeah. I and make this woman smile. The woman that has a bag of Cheetos. A woman that has never smiled before in her life. Yeah. That's what she looked like. She looked like the most miserable, poor, sad woman. Does a whole routine, takes his shirt off, like pours bottles of water all over his body. Funny as shit. Around, Charming, just- funny. Staring at him, stonewalling him the whole time. Yeah, we're thinking, oh, she's not going to crack. Until he does his big routine, and then he's like, <sighs> how much for the Cheetos and water? Yeah. Then she smiles. He smiles and, and laughs. Then everybody's watching him from outside, and yeah. they're like, yeah. That was the best part, too. And then too. right when everybody cheers is the, the big, like, the big crescendo of the song where they're like, don't want to hear you. Hear. Yeah. And they're like, yeah, it's, you did it. Never has there been such a triumphant it's, God, and it, scene. The scene has like, everything. Better than like the end of the Mighty Ducks or something. Oh, absolutely. The end of Rocky. This is just this has everybody. Everything. It's pure joy. This has his his crew, his brothers cheering him on on the outside. Like, you yeah. can do it, man. You, you have this. And they're all cheering that he made someone smile. Absolutely. They, you have, all they wanted to do was make You got this happy. guy in a really vulnerable position. Right, and he's really just putting himself out there only for the benefit of someone else. He's yeah. putting on the show just to make this woman smile. It is so heartwarming. I think this movie and hysterical. Those like he wasn't just phoning it in with these movies here, with these dance moves here, folks. Yeah. He, put, right, he was like he put his heart and soul in. The water scene was hysterical. Yeah, using the 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 vending machine as a prop, you know, as like a fireman's pole, basically. Yeah laughing my ass off i think this movie could could finally create peace in the middle east absolutely we should just fly over the middle east and just throw dvd copies of magic mike xxl one of the greatest scenes in in the history of cinema (laughs) like i'm not even fucking kidding anyone who doesn't laugh at this scene or it finds it charming has no fucking soul yeah so they're all uh, driving again. They're still all kind of whacked out on their molly. And they all decide that they're going to like all touch each other and bond together by, with touch. Yeah. And they're, so they're just throwing their old gear out of the window, yeah. trying new things. And, and it's a little... Fluffy falls asleep, <laughs> crashes. <laughs> well, he just closed his eyes. He was praying with them. But he... He like nodded. Oh, he, off. he did. He nodded off. Man, fluffy. And he crashes a Froyo truck. He gets a grade two concussion. He's in the hospital. They got to find a new MC. Yep. Um. 
and they're all just down in the dumps. They're like, oh, it's the yeah. come down. We're coming down. I guess, I guess this is oh. the. I guess this is the only source of antagonism this in this is, whole movie. Yeah. This, this is what you got. Here. Very short. Very short. Because they're ultimately like, because no, no, this is destiny. We're fine. Let's just keep on moving, guys. He tells them about Buffy. He's like, you got to like, stay here in the hospital for the next forty-eight hours, but we will continue. He's like, you think this is bad? And he pulls out his engagement ring, right. and he's like, she left me, guys. Right. That's why I'm here. I'm here to be with my bros, and and I'll be goddamned if we're gonna let this stop us right he's not gonna let this end right here he's like i know someone in savannah that can be our mc yes he does and that is he does jada pinkett that smith. is rome jada pinkett jada pinkett smith yeah. i didn't even realize it was her the first like 20 minutes man yeah holy shit this she, is the performance of a lifetime for her she was great she was incredible did you know that this role was originally supposed to go to Jamie Foxx. Wow. It was, they had Jamie Foxx, and at the last minute, the 11th hour, Perfect. Channing Tatum was like, let's make this it into a work. woman. Absolutely. we got to make this that, a woman. That adds so much dynamic yeah. to this movie, because here we're following male strippers. you got to flip the switch, man. you yeah. got to get a female pimp that's yeah. pimping dudes. And she presents herself like a pimp. Yeah. I mean, she is so strong. She's got that Sophisticated. Mansion. She's powerful. She's Did you a queen. notice that Michael Strahan was that stripper? Yes. yes I Holy shit. That he was, was awful. A giant woman. <laughs> yeah. Giant woman. Michael Strahan. You always leading with Man. the joke before He's, asking for what you want. He might have like this the best uh, post football career. Yeah. He's got. He's on that he's Sunday a, night lineup. The game show lineup on ABC. He's on Good Morning America. He used to be on Kelly. He used to be. With Kelly. It was People Kelly and love Michael. big black men with gaps in their teeth. Yeah. And he's charming as shit. He wears one he's got a great fashion and he's, etiquette. He's jacked. 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 I always liked him when he played. I yeah. thought he was a good contributor to the uh Giants. The well, I was gonna say the Fox Eleven pre show. <laughs> that too. He also contributed to the Giants. The NFL him football and, giants. Him and Howie and Terry. Oh. Rams, <laughs> I am doing a fantasy football league this year, man. Oh, First time ever. Thanks for inviting me. What's it work? Thanks for inviting me. Would you like an invite? No. Ooh, it's head-to-head, -head, though. Points after play, I think it's called. Points per yard, maybe. I don't know. I'm still learning all the, the lingo. It's going to be so fun. So I was thinking, what one of the things that really attracts me to this movie is it like speaks to like my fetish i like to be objectified i don't know i don't want to hear where this is going objectified you don't have and dominated to finish this by women wow i do really yeah I like snm to, I style like to be told what to do i guess i do too i like to be insulted i i don't know about that i'm pretty sensitive like not emotionally in every, not in everyday life but like i like to be told what the, to in do in the bedroom there you go yeah, yeah. With a woman, like, I like to be told what yeah, to do. I like to be like hit, slap. I don't like making decisions at all. I like I take direction well. This movie's for you because these guys defer to their queen. Yeah, 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 absolutely. Another, another thing I was thinking about when they're like grind, all these women are grinding on them. They're grinding on them. Yeah, a lot of cash, a lot of ones flying around. Is it like frowned upon to get a boner? Like no. I, I know if it was me. And I was doing this. Oh, if you're the all performer, these women were fawning over me. I'd probably get aroused. But hmm. these guys don't. Well, they're, we, they're professionals. They're professionals. We do know that they are, or at least the ones we follow in this movie, are all heterosexual, mm -hmm. right? I don't think any of them are closeted. You could tell. You yeah. could tell. I think they're they comfortable with their sexual identity, and it's a job. But they are straight. These so guys I, are male feminists. But maybe they they're are. just so focused on the dance that the woman, even though, God, some of these women some are just of, so beautiful. Like, like, what if she had, like, the perfect they're nose? They're, like, at some points, like, 69ing these yeah. women and stuff and, like, putting their dicks in their face. What if, okay, would it be inappropriate like, if Michael Strahan would have gotten an erection? Grinding well, that. I mean, <laughs> maybe he, that's what he's into. Yeah. He's like you. I know you're into, you're into it. Yeah. I like, like to toss that. I, giant woman around i like my uh <laughs> women like my hamburgers thick and named patty ah! 
<laughs> at he Dunfer. told me he told me that earlier. You could you could uh, more jokes like that and more at Dunfer on Twitter dot com. Um, but yet, yeah, do you think women would like That's it? D U N F U R. If the dancers got boners, um, yeah. I think so. Or do you think like if that, why would you are if you that happened me? they just start like they'd pull it out and start sucking? Well, have you seen those hungry bear videos <laughs> or something bear? It's like hungry. that's it escalates to like it's a stripper thing, but like they're just they look like normal girls at like an office party, and then they all just start fucking. They grab his dick and I suck it. I have no it. idea what you're talking something about. Something bear. They all start. They all <laughs> dress like bears. It's like fuzzy bear. Furries? I'll look it up later. <laughs> are you talking about furries? Furries? No, something bare. And it's 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 pornography. I think it's a Brazzers thing. And it's just like these these strip performances and then it escalates to actual penetration. Oh. Yeah. Okay. That's worth watching. I'll look for a link uh, on I, the, I the show notes. I think a woman would be flattered. You know, it's like, I got his dick wet. I got, yeah, well, I got it, I I got it, it up. Like I didn't get it, it wet. I, yeah. I think it would like it, but maybe it's frowned look, though, upon. I think it's tied down. I really do. They got to tuck you, that shit in somehow. Those are some teeny, teeny winkies. Teeny winkies. Teeny <laughs> I say that all the time I now. Do, I just, <laughs> Sometimes I'll go take, a, take a piss at work and I'll be alone in there and I'll be like, look at these tiny wangers. <laughs> oh, they can hear you like through the door. <laughs> <laughs> it, the, the bathroom's wow. outside the office. Oh, there you It's go. like in the court, okay, courtyard. They, are you ever going to? You're gonna escalate. You're gonna blow it. Uh, one day, <laughs> next time you're drunk in like, a bar, you talking to me. Next time you're in the bathroom at a bar, you're probably gonna say that. Yeah, I'll tell you. Wangers. Uh, listen to the No Holds Barred episode of Squared Circle Cinema if you don't know what we're talking about. Yeah, there you go. Uh, Donald Glover makes an appearance, and and he's there to make women feel better. Absolutely, His Rome name's Andre. Rome, Jada Pinkett. Brings up a random girl for the next performance. And this looks like a blast. These women are having so much fun. Yeah. It's just a mansion with different rooms of strippers. Mm-hmm. And there's food, there's drinks. You're like basically at a house party, but you got this MC, the lady of the night, this queen, Jada Pinkett, taking you around the rooms. And now I need to bring up, I got to bring up a, a lady here for the Donald Glover thing. And she picks the saddest yeah, quietest. Her mom res- was most the, the reserved first grocery owner in sweetest Atlanta. lady. And Donald Glover comes down and is like asking personal, not super personal, but you know, like, personal you know questions what, about him, like your, to, for his free. Mom? Yeah, she's like she was the first African American grocery owner. Yeah. owner in Africa. He's seeking out or in Africa. <laughs> in, oh boy, in Georgia. I'm the Savannah. racist. Jesus. No, it's because I said African American. Oh, then I okay. Said Africa. That's fine. You're the racist. I I forgot my next thought, Ryan. That was ignorant. Uh, sorry. Uh, so, uh, he's like he's getting seeking out material for his his rap, right? He's gonna freestyle yeah. about her, and he asks, "So, what's best about her mom?" And like, "What's your favorite thing?" And she's like, "Oh, by the way, she's there celebrating her divorce, so she's recently been devastated." And she's, he asks, "What's her favorite thing?" And she says, "Alcohol." But it wasn't like a scene where it's like alcohol. Everyone's like, "Woo!" It got it was quiet. Like, oh, it was like, "Oh man, oh, child, alcohol." So Donald, Donald Glover does this beautiful freestyle right on her face. Doesn't really. I think he keeps his jacket on. Yeah, you know, he's just an entertainer. He's not a stripper. And she smiled. Yeah, she smiled he's there to just lift, lift, lift you up. Um. So then Mike is trying to get Rome. To be their MC, and she doesn't want to go to that whack ass convention with him, and so she kind of challenges him to see if he's still magic, and he has to do like a dance, right? And it was a pretty and good dance. dance. He does, yeah. Man, there was some aggressive dollars. shit going on. Yeah, like some would call this rape. Yeah, there's <laughs> it was, he like he'd like toss some salad. Man, pretty much. <laughs> like, thank God that girl was flexible yeah. and spry. Yeah, I don't. These he was like throwing her around. Sometimes I feel like, are you? You got to stretch. Need to sign a, a waiver. <laughs> Did you stretch you first? Go to one of these things. Shit, because they might pick you up and th- toss your ass around. I'm sure women have gotten over there. Like, <laughs> what if you get like whiplash? Shit. <laughs> yeah, I know, man. They broke. <laughs> what bruised. if like uh, <laughs> these are strong, powerful men dry humping the shit? What if somebody? Out of these accident- poor little ladies. It looks like they're gonna like F five some of these girls. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> Kevin Nash does his uh, jackknife power bomb. <laughs> In local news, four women have died. He's like, I forgot where I was, brother. I thought I was in the wrestling ring, but it turns out I was on stage. Four ladies have died at the mine shaft. <laughs> <laughs> After <laughs> terrible botched F5 into a lap dance. Took so five, uh, uh, Andre ends up driving them to some undisclosed location. It's a house. So yeah, one because of the women he nailed it with the dance. Made, He's like, hey, you did that for me? We're cool. Yeah. We're cool. He asked but, for a car, right? Yeah. Well, it's just the ride. So she, they get the ride to the house of one of the women who was banged previously. Mm-hmm. But it's actually her mother's house. And her mother right. is Andy McDowell. Got to tell you, Andy McDowell, she's like the romantic interest of the 90s. So many movies where she's like somebody's wife or girlfriend. Mm-hmm. Never remotely found her attractive. Ever. as a Until in, this? During the 90s. This? Yeah. Holy shit. She because was, she was just so she's aggressive. She's finally coming out of her shell. Yeah, she's like... It took her I 50 only, years. I only had sex with one guy, and he turned out to be gay. Yep. That's what she said. She's wasted she's her like, entire wasted her time. 20s, 30s, yeah. and 40s with this asshole. Now she's drinking wine gave with her, her everything. Gave and, him everything. And ogling these men. Great. Getting drunk on freaking expensive-ass yeah, fucking wine. Yeah, had a great cellar. And you got this set up. You got the ladies. You got the older ladies. You got the young like, ladies. We got another together. scenario for stripping here coming up real quick. And so the guys are all, you know, just talking about like female empowerment and how like their men don't appreciate them. At one point, they're like, all you have to do how is do you ask your women. lady to trim the hedges if you don't trim your tree. Right. He's got his three day rule. Yeah. His three day growth. Like, rule. Really? Yep. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Ever a, since I'm I was 22. <laughs> I'm on like a six month. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> me too, man. Now. Holy I shit! I used oh. to give more of a shit, dude. I let my tail nail toenails grow. <laughs> I'm fucking pathetic. <laughs> my fingernails yeah. wouldn't be short if I didn't no. bite them. See, and this is what I was gonna get at too. Like, you know how they're all talking about like women should be appreciated by their men. You know, all you have to do is ask women what they want. Yeah, we're okay. healers. Yeah. They, yeah, they're healers. They have to ask women what they want. They, a lot of them don't get that. And then Tarzan comes in with the poignant line where he's like, you know, I would trade anything to come home to a wife and kids that love me. Yeah. That's one of the biggest moments. Absolutely. It carries so much weight. Thank you, Absolutely. Like, he thinks he's going to yeah. die alone. Yeah. I can relate to this, Ryan. Yeah. Well, all these people, I, I'm kind of, like, I'm, you're a single man. Like, you should take this movie and... And bring it into your love life. You gotta live every lot, every you gotta last live day. every last day that you uh huh go every day of your yeah. life. You gotta yeah. live like you're one of these guys. You, okay. you gotta live like Joe Mangianello oh. every day. So you were on a date In recently. The Pee Wee movie. Recently, you were on a date. Yes, I was. How did on Thursday? How did it go? It went all right. Yeah. yeah. Well, where'd you go? Uh, beer belly, dude. Oh, which yeah? was, was like good. one of my favorite places. Didn't even pick it. I was like, all right, that's cool. cool. I told you to go there before. It's it like was nice. By your house. Fucking loud as shit, though. You get to my god. The patio like was. An, they have like an app where you can pick full. the songs with your phone. Doesn't matter. Well, this is a first date here. You could have like put on some built to spill or oh, something. No, I was. Oh god, <laughs> that would have turned bad. <laughs> you like Ween? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, oh, wait, what, but like it was definitely the the like curb your enthusiasm like the chairs and tables are way too fucking close together i'm invading yeah. dude looks like whip the, the fucking drummer and whiplash sitting right next to me handsome as shit talking about the film industry i'm like yeah, cool, man. like i was in their intimate space but you know what it was comfortable i think we got along pretty well go out again i hope so you gotta you gotta treat her like you're one of these yeah. guys I told you her about You got to appreciate her. You got to tell her that she's a queen. I think I'd do that. You know? Then you, you got to listen. Yeah. And appreciate. Just take this movie with you. Listening's, listening's the hard part. Yeah. But I got to work on that for sure. Okay. Yeah. Thanks. I'm kidding, by the way. 
I'm not going to listen to a fucking word of advice you say. Who the hell do you think you are, huh? My Here, father? Take this. Take this pill. Okay. <laughs> okay. Saying? That's a good point. Thank you. That's great <laughs> advice. <laughs> um, we went to this pool hall, though. It was just a pool hall. Like, she's really good. Like, she's a, she's a scientist. She oh, knows all about what? angles and she's shit. She's a scientist? Yeah, she has, like, her initials on, like, the Hubble telescope or some rover on Mars or some shit. Does she work at, like, JPL or something? Yes. Or Cal- she yes. works at JPL? Yes. She, she Formally. Formally. It's like, what the fuck? She goes to, like, Caltech or something? Is that something? the Kaboom box? <laughs> <laughs> Jet Propulsion Laboratory? I don't know, because I couldn't hear a fucking word that came out of her mouth. It was way too loud. And all I had to do was carpet the walls. That's all you need to do. Carpet the fucking walls. Well, you can have a goddamn conversation. Next time, maybe you should go to the beach. But we got the death by duck. It was excellent. Afterwards, uh, so she wanted to place fuck a pool. And it's like, if you want to challenge me to pool, I'm going to fucking throw it down. In Koreatown, there is a pool hall. It's upstairs on these businesses up, atop a liquor store. It is dry. It smells like a gym. All it is is pool tables. That's it. There's probably there's some no drinking gambling that goes. Yeah, down there. there's no drinking. You, there's like a Gatorade machine. And that's it. And we're like, this is not the right place. <laughs> so we found a bar. Like, cause I don't like they're just serious pool players. I still need to give a real With, good. Like, how do you fucking exploration play pool without drinking? I don't understand Town. that. You've lived in Koreatown all these years, and you never take me anywhere. You know, I don't go down to the good parts of Koreatown myself. I, I should. Go to do some carry the nightlife there. in Koreatown is great. Little Tokyo as well, man. I almost want to go there instead. We could Uber it. Let's do it. I saw that at night for the first time just passing by. Beautiful. The most beautiful restaurants and architecture. <laughs> and women. Holy shit, dude. Well, right. I'm cussing a lot more in this. 47 minutes. So let's wrap, wrap it up. up. Wrap it up. But no, the, we were on the diesel line. Yeah. And he, like, though he's incapable of settling down and afraid, maybe, to start a family, he wants it so desperately. Yeah. And he believes it's, it's a ship that sailed, and it's a void in his heart you know, that will never be filled. It's not too late, Tarzan. It's not. It's never too late to, do, to be who you want to be and do what you want to do. There's a girl out there for him. And um, so a great thing happens. Oh, Tarzan. Big Dick finds his dick slipper. Yep. And it's Andy, Andy McDowell. McDowell has a huge pussy and it's perfect for him. And he and fucked her so good that she that gave she, him a car. Yeah, she's like, take my husband's Rolls Royce and go Fuckin out there a. and flaunt your dick for That's all these some women. That's good fucking. Yeah. Oh, one thing that I that like proves that all these guys are like male feminists is uh, at one point when Channing Tatum's talking to the young girl from before that was taking pictures of him. Mm-hmm. He's like, my God is a she. Yeah. Did you notice? That? Yeah. <laughs> Threw that right in there. My God is it, a she. She's like, she? Yeah. My God is a she. And didn't dwell on it at all. Didn't yeah. linger. Just moved on to yeah. the right point. See, gotta, his God has been a she for his whole life. You got to work your game like that, man. These people were excellently raised. Yeah. These guys had a very solid family unit. Yeah. They had like a strong liberal arts um, education. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, Tarzan wears a sleep apnea mask. Yes, at one point, a lot of exposition right there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, Rome ends up meeting them at their hotel in Myrtle Beach, and then they start practicing. Not only that, she upgrades those motherfuckers. Yeah, they do cussing a, way too much in this installment. They do. They go a montage, baller. A montage of dancing Prepping and dancing for the show. Prepping for the final performance. Elizabeth Banks is there to check him in. She's like, you're not on the list. Where's Dallas? Right. You're not on the list. And then Rome but just shows up. Rome's and then like, oh. they had an affair. They, they had start, some sort of intimate sexual relationship. Start feeling each other. Yeah. And she's like, all right, you're in. That was the equivalent to like, take, take my uh, they state start scissoring right there on the ring in Kingpin. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's the same scene. Exactly. Except like, oh, I... We used to scissor each other. It really is. Yeah. So then they all do their acts. Tarzan's up first. And, you know, he's like, man, I haven't been this nervous since Desert Storm. Yep. And he's we like, did not know about that. I didn't did know that about you were, that. You were in Desert Storm, man. Nice heart to heart. It's like he's it like, never came up. He's like, brother, you know, I didn't call you to, you know, be in the show. 
called you because I missed you. <sighs> friendship. Friendship is rare. Friend. You know, that's what I'm talking about. It. Friendship is rare. And a friend's a friend who knows what being a friend is. Talking. Sorry. Okay, so but in the midst of all this, you got 300 themed strippers. You got a mariachi yeah, band stripper. You got a Matrix guy, which I've never seen. Doing push-ups. You got army guys. Oh, yep. in this nervous desert storm. So he does his routine. It's like he's painting someone. Like he's Rembrandt. an artist. Yeah. And he's still got his fanny pack. Yep. He's got like a an artist's fanny pack. Rips off his shit. Girls go crazy. They all, um, this is an extend, this is what every, but every woman that paid to see this movie, they were waiting for this. Yes. This is the extended strip scene. Right. Everybody. And it's a, it's a freaking 15 minute routine. It's a yeah. whole segment. They all come out together, right? We meet yeah. our hostess. She says, we're going to take you along a ride. We're going to go one by one. Yeah. Each stripper here, there's if five on the stage. have birth control, there, there's exits on oh, both yeah. sides. <laughs> Just a heads up. A little yeah. disclaimer here. Your pussies might get really wet, all right? You might even get pregnant. <laughs> That's fucking awesome. I was like, oh, shit, this is going to be great. And she's talking like Jamie Foxx would, just proud. Oh, man, she killed it. Yeah. And so Dick debuts his new groom routine that turns and she's into shit like- a bondage routine. Right. You let me violate you. Helps me find my pistols. He dances to Closer by Nine Inch Nails, Ryan. Is that what you would dance to? Fuck, what well, it is now? Well, I can't <laughs> ape that now. What would I dance to? Built to Spill? Yeah, probably. <laughs> <laughs> Big Dipper by Built to Spill? <laughs> Get it add up. The Brontosaurus. Carry the zero. No car. You get the car, I'll get the night. Uh, that actually would be a good uh-huh. song to strip to. It's a very sentimental song. Right. You can show me later. Time trap. You can never know that. <laughs> God, just gyrating my so, dick in their face. So it ends with Mike's. I'm going to start lifting routine. weights, dude. It ends with Mike's big routine. Then they all come out and they play that song. All I do is win, win, win. Mm-hmm. And the band go up. And then Tobias Fluffy shows up. He's all better. The ice cream truck's all fixed. Yeah. They're all like, yeah, we're friends. We did it. There's fireworks. And everybody's having a great time. And that's it. That's it. Perfect. Uh, Yeah. Fluffy's out. His car is fine. It's drivable. They still need to do some paint. They said, we're probably not going to get the, the paint done. We'll do that later. But right? you know, Just get it drivable. He's, he made it in time to celebrate. He made it back. That's Everybody was matters. there except for Channing Tatum's partner in the beginning. <laughs> Unfortunately, he's still lonely Yeah, with his family. See? He stayed home. He had to. Well, somebody's got to watch the show. Yep. Man. He got home. He was like, thank stuff. you. Thank you for allowing me to have that. I couldn't well, have done that. Yeah. None of this would have happened if it wasn't for you. He needed to go on this trip so he could come back and focus to figure out how to get that guy help him. Do you think, yeah. Do you think this movie needed that scene? Yeah, I do. I think I think everything was necessary. In this movie. No, 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 no. Yeah. A scene where he literally comes back oh, and no. thanks him. That's no. too sentimental. That's we too melodramatic. Know. We all know. It, it ended perfectly. It did. It ended on that song with a celebration. But they, any extra would have been too much. Dude. I honestly think we all know sh- we all know Mike's a good guy. I don't think there. Mike was into the the chick though, dude. Like they didn't kiss. Yeah, I think they're just going to be friends. He's not ready yet. Yeah, maybe in the future. Yeah, maybe my Mike, Mike he, he XXX was, you know, just trying to help her feel better because she was eating that red velvet cake and yeah, all sad. He was down, and he did. He succeeded. Yeah. He made her feel better. That's what this movie's all about: making yeah. women feel better. And the routine was a great with the the mirror routine. Their final final. Yeah. Uh, grand finale there. Yeah. Great moves. That motherfucker can dance. So uh, I I give this um, I give this a thirteen out of thirteen. Me too. Great I'll give movie. it a. I mean, I'll just give it like a twelve out of thirteen. I'll give it thirteen out of thirteen. 
Yeah, I'll, I'll give it, it a I'll give it a I'll give it a, a twenty out of twenty one. I'll give it ten rings of the bell. Delightful. Ten How did this not salute. nice? So here's the thing. So typically, uh, central conflicts are usually like you know man versus man, man versus monster, man versus self, man versus nature. This is man what? versus self. Man versus self. Man versus self. Journey of self discovery. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. And you learn that you need you need you need people in your life. You need so, a community. You need a village. Right. To really be happy and free. That's the antagonism right there. Their own self doubt. Their self doubt. Their isolation. Love it. Yeah. Well, on that note. You're playing Little League with your little insults and your rhymes and your millions and millions and your finallys. And I'm in the big leagues. I'm swinging for the fence. You need to understand that your little jabs and your insults, it's all kitty games. You can't leave a mark on the champ's face. Come Royal Rumble, understand. When you step into the ring, your arms are too short to box with God. <laughs> and I'm Mike Big Tobacco Ryan saying, new WWF figures got the power. Power of the WWF. Each sold separately. Dig it?